So it looks like Solana suffered a, uh, well, almost suffered a catastrophe. They were able to patch this bug. So let's go ahead and dive in here and see what's going on. Uh, Solana averts catastrophe with quiet patch of major token vulnerability. Uh, the article goes on to say, the Solana Foundation has revealed that a critical vulnerability affecting its token 2022 standard was quietly patched in April, aver uh, averting what could have been a catastrophic breach. If exploited, the flaw would allow attackers to mint an unlimited number of tokens or withdraw funds from any account without authorization. Now that, to say that that's a big deal is uh, kind of an understatement because I mean, if they didn't catch this bug, the entire Solana chain would have just failed instantly. I mean, that's irreparable damage. And, you know, the problem with this is that it's not the first time we've seen this type of thing from Solana. In fact, if we look at their track record here, here's a full list of Solana outlet outages. So if we go down here, uh, you can see the full list. I mean, it's just, this is ridiculous. 35 minutes, 17 uh, hours. Uh, this one's an hour, uh, 30 hours. So, and there's 10 outages here. And the list just goes on and on. And this is the second type of vulnerability that this has happened this year where they do in a regular state train, uh, state change transition. So, I mean, to me, this is just a blockchain that is, uh, it's a patchwork blockchain of duct tape and databases. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and, and I, I know that I'm an e Ethereum guy, but this, like, the reason that I go after Solana is because of stuff like this. You know, what I'm, what I'm saying, like, if you look into the stuff that I talk about, it, I'm not making things up here. This is all verifiable public fact. And I mean, like, okay, so for, for example, like you can't have, like, if you're going to build, rebuild the entire financial system on top of a blockchain, you can't have these vulnerabilities because if you have trillions and trillions of dollars on a blockchain like this, that continues to have this series of outages and failures and bugs on its core code. So, I mean, I'm not talking about like a, some smart contract bug that some independent party built for a specific application that's built on top of the chain. We're talking about the core chain here that is the problem. And if you, you, know, you build trillions of dollars worth of assets on it, you effectively have the world's largest bug bounty on a protocol. And so people are going to actively look for bugs. And so they didn't catch this bug, but if you have a lot of money sitting on a blockchain, or even just another government, you know, this, it's a national security risk. Like, let's say that you onboard all, trillions of dollars worth of stable coins onto Solana, and they did not catch this bug in time. And it gets, I mean, you're talking market-wide systemic chaos if something like this were to happen. This cannot happen on Ethereum. And we'll get into that here in a second, but I want to go ahead and continue with the article. So community reaction, uh, while the vulnerability was handled swiftly, Solana's decision to keep the issue under wraps drew mixed uh, reactions. Now, I will kind of throw a bone to Solana here. If there is a vulnerability that is this bad, you don't want to advertise it before you can fix it. So I, you know, I kind of, I understand that part of it, but the fact is this should have never existed to begin with. Like you, and, and, it, and it's a series of fit network failures and outages and bugs that uh, this is why I say it's a patchwork of duct tape and, and databases. So um, it, let's go ahead and dive in here and we're going to take a look at uh, what Ryan, uh, has to say. A, this is uh, Ryan, uh, Berkman's on, uh, on X. So he kind of, he did an excellent breakdown of, of the issue. So Ryan says people are missing the important points, uh, this Solana, with the Solana emergency fork situation. So he says ETH has client diversity and a protocol spec steered by a meaningful research community. Uh, the most popular is being the, the ETH client Geth, uh, has a 41% market share. Solana has one prod client, just one. Then he says, don't let them tell you. Otherwise, it's very easy to check this for yourself. So basically, the point that Ryan's trying to make here is that if you can imagine the blockchain as a huge passenger jet, and you have three turbines on this side, you got three turbines on this side, and you want to, and this jet represents both the blockchain and the future economy that you're going to build on top of it. If one of those turbines suddenly breaks, well, you still have five other turbines that you can keep chugging along with. Those are the clients that can keep the blockchain uh, functional. That's what you have on Ethereum. You have backup clients. If you have a small bug in one of these clients, it's not going to be an issue. It's very diverse. It's very secure. Whereas Solana has one engine and you don't want to have a situation where you have a bug in that engine 
and now you've crashed into the Atlantic and your whole economy is drowning. And this is why I say that institutions are overwhelmingly choosing Ethereum because it focused on decentralized security first and foremost, whereas Solana focused on how many transactions can we do and how fast can we make it go. You know, I'd say that's like building a race car without any brakes. So Ryan goes on to say that Ethereum has never had a protocol spec level bug that required an emergency hard fork. Ethereum has never had any downtime. The closest thing that we've had was back in November of, uh, I believe it was 2020, where Ethereum had a bug in one of its clients, but the network did not go down because we had client diversity. We had a lot of different clients and we were able to, uh, to remain uh, chugging along as normal. So the second point that uh, Ryan makes is ETH doesn't do a regular app state changes. So he says that this is centralized as F, uh, AF. So uh, basically an irregular state change or a transition is where you hard fork a blockchain so that you can make changes to it. Now, uh, he goes on to say that governments already know it's possible to get Solana to do a rapid unplanned irregular state transition that it's happened twice in the past year. This defeats the entire purpose of having a blockchain. You know, I mean, imagine another world government pressuring uh, the central uh, centralized entity of Solana into undoing transactions or uh, doing this state change to make maybe uh, we're in a wartime and they want to attack uh, infrastructure, uh, financial infrastructure. So that's the the key with decentralized security is that that vulnerability doesn't exist. You cannot force Ethereum to do anything. It's you build on top of it and do what you, you want, but you can't force the core base layer that everything else relies on for decentralized security. Uh, and that is how, you know, financial institutions in the United States can trust untrustworthy partners around the world to do business and be even more profitable. It is that decentralized credibility that ensures that you're able to do business across the globe in a trustless, credibly neutral environment. And something does appear to be brewing under the hood here. So we take a look at Solana and Ethereum, there is a rising wedge forming here on the weekly time frame, And I always say that they write the news to match the price action. So I wouldn't be surprised if something, either something bad happens here and Solana begins to just collapse down or something really good happens for Ethereum and it goes up. But either way, I'm seeing a lot of posts on X right now about, you know, sell Ethereum, buy by uh, Solana, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's because they're they're aware of this rising wedge formation, which is an extremely bearish pattern. So you know, again, this is I'm just relaying the facts here. So you know, take with this and and do what you will with it. That's all I'm relaying is just the facts. So let's go ahead and move on to some other news here. So Donald Trump claims uh, he's placing 100% tariffs on all films produced outside of America that are brought into the country says any and all movies coming into the country that are produced in foreign lands, uh, we want uh, movies made in America again. So that's an interesting post. And the markets didn't seem to like it. They seemed to pull back a little bit. This came out uh, last night. Uh, and so I just had to keep an eye on that. You know, the this is the same old terror fears that we have had going on for a while now. My hope is that this stuff gets resolved and the markets can continue on. Uh, there are talks of uh, some trade deals getting done. So again, we're just waiting for those first few trade deals to be finalized. And I expect that the markets will bounce on that relief. So SEC Commissioner, uh, they're doing a meeting coming up. I believe it's May 12th. Tokenization can transform financial markets. This is Hester Pierce's comments. So uh, the commissioner says that uh, tokenization is a technology that could significantly transform financial markets. The task force will be holding a roundtable discussion on May 12th discussing tokenization and DeFi. And this makes a lot of sense because on, I believe it was our last video, we talked about all these different financial institutions that are looking to start uh, rapidly tokenizing stocks, bonds, commodities, uh, you know, stable coins, pretty much any ownership rights of any asset in the world, even real estate, which is $700 trillion market globally, is going to be tokenized. And so a lot of these financial institutions have been experimenting with private versions of Ethereum in the background, and they're just waiting for regulatory clarity to come out, and then they're going to go full steam ahead and start launching their, uh, merging from their private chains, private chains. Well, this is my speculation, but they're going to start merging from private chains that they've been running for years in the background to the Ethereum mainnet. Now, why would they do that? Well, they would merge because they want to be part of this large ecosystem because you make a lot more profit 
You know, I've said this before, you make more profit if you have a lemonade stand in Central Park in New York than if it's on a desert island. So being part of a huge network that is decentralized, incredibly neutral, there's a lot of profit to be made out there. So that's why they want to do this. Now, if you want to take a look at this roundtable whenever it happens, and I will cover it, uh, you just go to the seca.gov website and you'll be able to stream it there. So the other news is that uh, this week we have uh, the federal funds rate meeting. Markets are expecting it to remain at 4.5%. It's something like 98% chance that it's going to remain steady and they aren't going to cut rates. And so what I'm going to be looking for here is I want to hear more dovish talk. I want to see what's coming on on uh, what's going to be coming out looking forward. That's what the market's going to be listening for. You know, if Jerome Powell comes out and he's he says, you know, you know, maybe down, maybe we can start to uh, cut back on our our uh, QT. Maybe go neutral. I believe they're at uh, like I want to say it's five billion in Treasuries. But if they go neutral, you know, that's they're becoming they're starting as one step closer to a situation where they're in a quantitative easing environment. Uh, I do expect interest rates to start coming down in the future. Here, uh, right now, they're pricing in about one percent for the year. So we just have to keep an eye on that. This is just going to contribute to more global liquidity, which is going to fuel, uh, you know, risk assets like stocks and Bitcoin to go even much higher, and Ethereum as well. So this is really interesting. I'm uh, gonna have to keep an eye on that, but. I think that pretty much covers it for today. So if y'all have any questions, leave in the comment section down below and I'll talk to y'all next time.